musicians, the heralds announcing the arrival of Kwame and Kuma bringing For a century, African diaspora and African continental activism, including colonial and post-colonial political movements, the linkage of political and cultural solidarity vis-a-vis -vis pan africanism and the overall quest for the adherence to human rights and the realization of global social justice. Quite notably, Ambassador Thompson was a participant in the Fifth Pan-African Congress, which took place in Manchester, England in 1945, an event that laid the groundwork for anti-colonial and liberation struggles in Africa, and included activists, scholars, and future post-colonial heads of state. Ambassador Thompson's friends and colleagues at that seminal event in Manchester included George Padmore, Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, and of course, W.E.B. Du Bois. Later, Ambassador Thompson, an Oxford-educated barrister of law, would practice in East Africa, where he was part of the legal team that defended Kenyan independence leader Jomo Kenyatta. Ambassador Thompson was also actively involved in the independence movements in Belize and the Bahamas. He has practiced law throughout the Caribbean, including in Trinidad, Barbados, St. Kitts, and the Bahamas. And additionally, for many years, he served as president of the Jamaican Bar Association. He's also a Queen's Counsel. He has served as a member of the State of Jamaica, a, a member of the Senate of Jamaica, and member of the House of Representatives of Jamaica, as well as served as Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of National Security, and Minister of Mines and Natural Resources. Ambassador Thompson is also a recipient of the Legend of Africa Award, presented by the Organization for African Unity, now the African Union. Finally, though there is of course very much more to say about our distinguished speaker, Ambassador Thompson has played a key role in the movement for reparations for the transatlantic slave trade and its impact on Africa and its diaspora. He is a member of the group of eminent persons on reparations, which in 1992 was charged by the Organization for African Unity to pursue reparations to Africa and its diaspora. Without further ado, we are most fortunate to have the opportunity to welcome the Honorable Dudley Thompson. which distinguishes us from all other peoples. And what is this freedom? We take it all for granted, uh, like good health. We don't really appreciate it until we lose it or until it is threatened. But we do know that freedom is indivisible. You cannot be half free and half slave. And this is as true for a man as it is for a nation. We also know that freedom demands eternal vigilance. It has not always been universal. Let us, for a moment, trace its history and its development. I assume that all of us here generally accept that Africa introduced civilization to this world. The Senegalese anthropologist Sheikh Anton Diop, as well as archeologists from Kenya, LSB Leakey, both of international reputation, have supplied evidence in support of this. The Sphinx, the pyramids, and other ancient artifacts reveal the civilization of ancient Egypt herself, an African country, over 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. Egypt, a daughter of Ethiopia, became an early city as primitive man, the isolated hunter, advanced to become an agriculturist and to remain stationary in his household to guard his garden and his flocks. And these houses soon became communities. As these communities grew to become cities, he followed the Nile up the Fertile Valley to build the city of Cairo as it reached the Mediterranean Sea. And there it spread. This early advancement of Africa's leadership role is certainly not visible in today's world. She does not today lead the world in military power or financial power. 
are the intellectual leadership that competes universities, radio, Hollywood, the newspapers, and other means by which they disseminate their culture. Africa has no Silicon Valley, which today is advancing technology and so on. I'm not going to digress and to distress you as to why or when this change came about. I am inviting you to concentrate on two events that were largely responsible for changing the history of the world. First, the institution of African slavery in the early 15th century witnessed a clash of civilizations which had a profound effect and which lasts unto this day. This was African slavery, the crime against humanity, whereby mercantile capitalism resulted in the exploitation and despoliation of a continent unequaled in the history of human life. I need not detail the heinousness of this event except to say that such a despicable event has never been inflicted on any other continent. For four or five centuries, the ferries of infamy that transported the kidnapped tens of millions of Africa's best and strongest people across the Middle Passage in the triangular voyage between Europe, Africa, and Americas in indescribable conditions far exceeding our imagination. The second event, some four centuries later, in 1884, known as the Scramble for Africa, where the Western powers, including Britain, United States, France, Germany, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, and others, met in Berlin under Bismarck without a single African participant. None were there, but they carved up that continent, distributing it as colonies under their separate flags and jurisdiction. This has been described as the vilest scandal for loot that disfigures the history of human conscience. One example of this sharing out is, for instance, the granting of the entire Congo. That was given as a gift to King Leopold of Belgium, a country. But Congo is 76 times the size of Belgium itself. Let us examine the effects and the relationships of these events. You know, in the state of Hawaii, every vehicle is supposed to have no-fault insurance, which means that if you have been injured by a vehicle, the vehicle should cover at least the first $10,000 of your medical insurance. If you need help attaining just compensation for your physical injuries, call attorney Andre Wooten. We have been fighting for the rights of people in Hawaii for over 20 years.